the most famous of these victims is former NSA analyst Edward Snowden, or as some folks might know, know him as a woke Joseph Gordon-Levitt lookalike. That's because he played Edward Snowden in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how many people were going to actually remember that movie was actually made. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Now, Edward Snowden revealed that the United States government was co uh, collecting mass amounts of data and using our cell phones to spy on the American people as if, you know, like we were all spies. Like the United States government is basically like that one friend that thinks everybody is talking about them all the time and then freaks out on strangers at the bar, you know, which, which just makes wing night awkward all the time for everybody. That's all it does. Now... Once he found this information, Snowden freely gave the information to journalist Glenn Greenwald of The Intercept. Again, he didn't sell it to China or Russia or a fucking balding supervillain living inside a volcano. <laughs> he gave it to a journalist. I mean, this is an argument that's used against whistleblowers all the time, every single day on, on corporate media, whenever they bring up whistleblowers. Well, you know, they... They could have sold it to some kind of foreign intelligence. Yeah, but they didn't. Yeah, but they could have. Yeah, yeah, well, they fucking didn't. Yeah, but what if, oh my God, how are you a news network? <laughs> how are you a place for information? And now, because the United States hates getting caught with its pants down, which some people believe it's because the U.S. has a complex about its dick size not measuring up to the rest of the world. <laughs> Which really, I got to say, is why the U.S. should really start using the metric system. But this, that is a different subject for a different time. <laughs> but because the United States hates getting caught with its pants down, they tried to get Snowden's asylum requests denied by virtually every single European country. Right, Snowden was eventually granted asylum in Ecuador, but he had to get there from Hong Kong, which meant that he had to fly through Russia. The U.S. intelligence service and the Obama administration knew his flight landed in Moscow when they revoked his passport, stranding him in exile in Russia. What I wasn't expecting was that the United States government itself, as you said, uh, would cancel my passport. So I'm stopped at, at passport control, and there's this, uh, you know, the standard passport officer. And um, when I go through the line, uh, he takes a little bit too long. Uh, he picks up the phone, he makes a call, uh, and I, I realize it's longer than everybody else. And suddenly he looks at me and just says, uh, there is problem with passport, <laughs> you know, uh, come with. And so I'm led very quickly into this um, business lounge. <laughs> which is very much not standard. Uh, normally, you'd be taken off to a, a security area, and I go in, and it's a, a room full of Russian guys in, in business suits. And the first thing I'm thinking about, because every alarm bell in my head is uh, ringing, is are they recording this? Are they using this to try to blackmail me, to coerce me? I mean, so immediately I go, look, uh, I worked for the CIA. I, I know what this is. I know what this, uh, how this is supposed to go. This is not going to be that kind of conversation. So you declined there the, the Russian intelligence request to cooperate then. You got stuck in the airport for 40 days. Because um, you said something very important, which was that I was trapped in that airport for 40 days. Again, for those people who might be a little bit skeptical of me, if I had cooperated with the Russian government, right, if you think I'm a Russian spy, I would have been in that airport for five minutes before they drove me out in a limo, you know, to the palace where I would be living for the rest of my days before they, you know, throw the parade where they call me a hero of uh, Russia. I applied for asylum in 27 different countries around the world, uh, places like Germany, France, Norway, that I thought the U.S. government and the American public uh, would be much more comfortable with me being there. And yet we saw something extraordinary happen, just, just one thing, which is that uh, the U.S. government worked quite hard to make sure I didn't leave Russia, to the point that they actually grounded uh, the presidential aircraft of the president of Bolivia, uh, which is like grounding Air Force One. It's something that's really unprecedented in diplomatic history. And it's very much an open question today. Um, why did the U.S. government work so hard to keep me in Russia? Basically, this gave them the opportunity to claim 
that he was a Russian spy. Oh. And then the NSA can finally live out their James Bond fetish. <laughs> they can finally become one of the Bond girls as an entire agency, you guys. It's a big deal. It's a big deal, right? The NSA can be transformed from the National Security Agency to the National Pussy Galore Agency. Oh, man. <laughs> It's fun, right? It's fun when dreams come true at the expense of innocent people. It's a good time, isn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, there are some people that look at someone like Edward Snowden and say, well, why can't he just come home and face the music? But if he did come home, the music would be listening to Nickelback in a jail cell for life without a fair trial. And I believe listening to Nickelback is against the Geneva Convention. So. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what he says about, about coming back home. I would not have uh, received a, a fair trial. Uh, there would not have been much of a trial at all. Uh, I would only have received a sentencing. And the question there is, um, what message does that send, whether you like me or not? Uh, I could be the best person in the world. I could be the worst. What message does a conviction where you spend the rest of your life in prison for telling journalists things that change the laws of the United States, uh, that have re resulted in the most substantive reforms to intelligence authorities uh, since the 1970s, uh, if the only result of doing that is a life sentence in prison, the next person who sees something criminal happening in the United States government uh, will be discouraged from coming forward, and I can't be a part of that. And that denial of trial, that denial of fair trial, was under the Obama administration, who evoked the Espionage Act more than any other president. Right? Look, the Obama administration had every opportunity to undo this legacy of democratic authoritarianism that was left behind by their predecessors, but they didn't. Right? Obama exiled Snowden, and he only commuted Chelsea Manning's sentence. Manning was the U.S. Army soldier that revealed documents proving that the American military was killing Afghani civ civilians and international journalists to WikiLeaks. If Obama truly believed that these war crimes are something that the country should atone for, he would have started by completely pardoning Chelsea Manning. 